This morning, roadmap to recovery, new guidelines on easing coronavirus restrictions, how Australia is tracking in the fight to flatten the curve. Ruby Princess investigation, police set to outline how long a criminal probe into the virus riddled cruise ship will take as pressure mounts for an independent inquiry. And hospital lockdown, staff and patients evacuated as a virus outbreak hits Tasmania's northwest, the cruise ship case that caused the crisis. This is 7 News with Angie Asimus. Good morning. The World Health Organisation has released new guidelines which could help plan a way out of our strict coronavirus restrictions as authorities focus on flattening the curve. Political reporter Olivia Leeming is in Canberra. Olivia, the Health Minister has warned Australians not to be complacent. Yeah, warning Australians that they must stick with these tough restrictions, even despite these encouraging numbers. Though National Cabinet is expected this week to at least start planning the nation's exit strategy using the very latest medical data. The World Health Organisation has released new criteria that countries must meet before even considering easing restrictions. They include ensuring transmission is controlled, that uh, health systems can detect, test, isolate, treat and trace every case that outbreak risks are minimised, preventative measures are in place, importation risks can be managed and ensuring communities are fully educated and empowered to adjust to the new norm. All important goals for Australia. Here's more from the Health Minister. We are now seeing consolidation of the flattening of the curve. The latest data shows that we have had consistent growth in new cases of below 2% a day. That doesn't mean we're out of our challenge. There is still growth and there could at any time be outbreaks and spikes. Now, the full economic impact of the virus for Australia is still unfolding with new Treasury analysis due to be released today is expected to show unemployment here is set to reach 10% in the June quarter, which means more than 1.4 million Australians out of work. Angie. OK, thank you very much, Olivia. The New South Wales Police Commissioner will brief the state's Premier today on the Ruby Princess investigation as pressure grows for an independent inquiry into the cruise ship fiasco. Top cop Mick Fuller will outline how long the criminal probe is expected to take while the ship remains docked at Port Kembla. The kitchen has been identified as the likely epicentre of the outbreak on board, which has led to more than 600 coronavirus cases and 18 deaths around the country. It's now been reported the ship allowed meals for its 1,000 crew members to be prepared in the galley for weeks, despite the warning signs. A Ruby Princess case is believed to be behind a major crisis in Tasmania, forcing the closure of two hospitals in Burnie. Dozens of healthcare workers have contracted the virus and now all 1,200 staff have been forced to self-isolate. Patients are being ferried to neighbouring hospitals while the quiet coastal community goes into lockdown. The suspected source is one of two patient passengers from the Ruby Princess who are both now dead. I think that there will be more deaths to come in coming days and we need to ready ourselves for that. This is an enormous operation with an enormous amount of planning that has gone underway. An OSMAT team from the National Disaster Centre is on its way to deep clean the hospital. A child care centre south of Brisbane has been forced to close after a positive COVID-19 case. A child is believed to have contracted the virus and attended the Jim Boomba Centre for four days while infected, according to a letter sent to parents. Authorities are working closely with staff to identify all who may have been exposed. Children who return positive test results for coronavirus generally present mild symptoms. Western Sydney Nursing Home is the centre of a new COVID-19 outbreak after an aged care nurse went to work for six days while she was unwell before testing positive. An elderly resident at the Anglicare Newmarch House in Cadden's has already contracted the virus with fears more will follow. Some staff are still going to work even when they have symptoms, uh, flu-like symptoms, just being sick. If you're working in an aged care facility, you are working with some of the most vulnerable people in our community. Please don't go to work if you're feeling sick. Just don't go. 
The staffer also worked two shifts at Grace Stains Disability Services, with all residents now isolating in their own rooms and six staff in self-isolation at home. Nearly 200 Australians caught out by global coronavirus lockdowns have spent their first night on home soil after arriving in Sydney on a mercy flight. They were stranded in Cambodia, now thankful to have completed a very tense evacuation. Phnom Penh, 7,000 kilometres from Sydney. Australian Justin Stewart has been stranded here for weeks. Here in uh, Phnom Penh, Cambodia, on our way to the airport for the flight organised by Ambassador Pablo Kang. Once regular flights between the two countries have ceased due to the pandemic. Unfortunately, all the commercial flights were cancelled, so we were stuck for another two weeks. This Mercy flight was organised at the 11th hour. All commercial options just weren't viable and we're really grateful to the Aussie government for getting us home to our families. This Thursday, Cambodia's borders close. We negotiated essentially a commercial agreement with an airline that would enable uh, people from here to, to fly home at, at very reasonable prices. The Singapore Airlines flight arrived in Sydney on board 204 very relieved Australians. The flight was pretty smooth really, Phnom Penh to Singapore, Singapore to Sydney. According to the Foreign Affairs Department, around 1 million Australians live and work overseas. Since March 13, around 280,000 Australians citizens and permanent residents have returned home. They may well be home here in Australia but their journey continues. All of them will now be required to enter quarantine for a period of 14 days at a range of hotels around Sydney. At check-in, temperature checks and bags wiped down. This charter flight from India carrying nearly 450 Australians touched down in Melbourne as Canberra reminds citizens abroad time is running out. Peter Fegan, 7 News. Queensland schools will open for term two next week, but only for vulnerable students and the children of essential workers. All other kids will be taught from home via remote online learning for at least the first five weeks of term. Students will be able to borrow devices and will be given internet SIM cards to help them study. The measures will be reviewed on the 15th of May. The federal government is considering subsidising some flights for Qantas and Virgin Australia to keep domestic routes open during the pandemic. Both airlines have dramatically cut their schedules and stood down thousands of workers since travel bans were introduced. The flight subsidies would be in addition to the $1 billion that's already been committed to the local airline industry. Many more of us are taking to running tracks and bike paths as an excuse to get out of the house. But there are fears keeping fish while keeping your distance could pose a health risk. It's one of the only reasons we can leave our homes. But as thousands turn to exercise, social distancing rules are under pressure. People are trying to give it the space, but sometimes when it does get a bit congested, it is hard. Keeping 1.5 metres apart is almost impossible when people pass you or are in your way, forcing some onto the road. There's a lot of people on the path today, so we just thought we'd take a bit of precaution and have our own space. One overseas study says the gap should be 5 metres if walking behind someone or 10 metres if running to avoid transmission droplets. It was only a single study, so we shouldn't necessarily take it to be gospel yet. The 1.5 metre rule is based on people at rest, not exercising when they are breathing heavily. If more studies like this come up, there may be some evidence for maybe someone running or briskly walking for using a homemade mask. For many, social distancing is hard to control when out exercising, but they believe any risk is outweighed by the health benefits of fitness. The advice is get some exercise, but keep as much distance as you can. Louisa Cheatley, 7 News. Victoria Police have reportedly opened a new investigation into George Pell. The Herald Sun reports police are conducting a secret probe into a fresh abuse allegation dating back to the 1970s. Investigators have not yet approached the Cardinal or his lawyers. George Pell has described his treatment by police in the original investigation as extraordinary in his first televised interview to air later today. 
Malcolm Turnbull has taken a fresh dig at bitter rival Tony Abbott as he promotes his new memoir. The former Liberal Prime Minister takes aim at his predecessor, calling him a very dangerous Prime Minister. Mr Turnbull reveals several chapter titles of his autobiography on social media. The book, called A Bigger Picture, was pushed back for rewrites following Scott Morrison's shock election victory. Salvage efforts will get underway for a boat which capsized off Sydney, sending the four people on board tumbling into rough surf. A man walking nearby saw the vessel overturn off Collaroy Beach and swam out to help. The boat's going up and down and they were getting dragged down into the water as well and they are struggling as well but they are still alright. The rescued boaties were checked out by paramedics. One woman was taken to hospital with rib injuries. Police are investigating a bizarre incident in Queensland where a man tried to stop two criminals stealing his ute. The thieves got more than they bargained for when the owner jumped onto the back of the Nissan Navara moments before it took off down the Cairns Street. He was eventually thrown off and the car dumped. Incredibly, he wasn't injured. Checking Tuesday's weather now, Brisbane mostly sunny and a top of 28 degrees. Sydney sunny reaching 24. Canberra an early fog then mostly sunny 22. Melbourne 23 degrees and partly cloudy. Hobart will be partly cloudy 21. Adelaide sunny 28. Partly cloudy for Perth 25 degrees and Darwin a mostly sunny 35. Still to come on 7 Early News, Boris Johnson officially coronavirus free as a crisis hit European country takes a big step towards returning to normal. And the historic Australian bakery battling through the crippling pandemic, how they're managing to survive. That's next. The number of coronavirus cases has surpassed 1.8 million globally. In the UK, a further 667 people have died from COVID-19, bringing the total number of deaths to more than 10,200. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has detected negative now to the virus after being released from hospital after more than a week. It comes as the parents of Kiwi nurse Jenny McGee, who was praised by Mr Johnson for helping save his life, spoke about her experience. She had just had a most surreal time in her life, something she will never forget, and that she had been taking care of Boris. Meantime, Spain has relaxed some lockdown measures as the daily death toll falls to 517. People were handed face masks at transport hubs as businesses, including the construction sector, slowly reopen. The U.S. has overtaken Italy with the highest number of COVID-19 deaths, with nearly 22,000 recorded. More than 554,000 people have tested positive to coronavirus in the country. Top health officials say the outbreak could reach its peak this week. In New York, the new epicentre of the virus, the curve is flattening, with the number of people being taken to hospital down, and the number of patients discharged daily is steady. Russia has introduced tougher coronavirus measures in Moscow as the capital enters its third week of quarantine. Police checkpoints have been set up in and around the capital with only residents allowed to pass to curb the spread of the virus. Authorities are also conducting round-the-clock patrols. Russia has reported more than 2,500 new cases, a record daily rise, bringing its overall tally to more than 18,000. To other news now, and a huge clean-up has begun in parts of the US after a deadly storm ripped through the south, killing at least 18 people and destroying hundreds of homes and other buildings. Around 34 tornadoes were reported in Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi and Georgia, leaving scenes of devastation. The storms also caused flooding and mudslides in mountainous areas and knocked out power to more than a million people. Despite the number of coronavirus cases in China declining, one father wasn't taking any chances. He made this inflatable suit for his two-year-old son as the family ventured out to a theme park to enjoy the sunshine. The creation, which looks like a miniature astronaut suit, is complete with an air purification system, a device to monitor air quality and an electric fan to keep it all cool. Well, it's outlasted the Spanish flu, the Great Depression and World War II. Now one of Sydney's oldest bakeries in another fight for survival. Despite being surrounded by closed stores, the baker's oven is still trading. In the heart of one of the country's busiest tourist hotspots, 
almost every business has closed its doors. Historic pubs, cafes and other stores lining the normally bustling George Street, buckling under the COVID crisis. We did consider closing, but what are you going to do at home? Stay in self-isolation. I prefer to serve people, talk with them, see how they're going. Not that there are many people to talk to anymore. Of course, they're only doing takeaways now and there's a new essential item on the menu, even before you step inside. The Baker's Oven Cafe has seen quiet times before. It was heartbreaking to see with the light rail, but now it's, it's just catastrophic. 121 George Street has always traded as a small business, run as a bakery since 1922. The previous owners restored it in the 70s before the Krikados family bought it in 1982. Started helping Dad um, from about 10, 10 years old. The landlord at least has come to the party giving them two months rent free and another six months deferral, although that in itself has created more questions. Like countless others, Chris knows it will be tough, but they're going to keep their doors open as long as they can. Yeah, we're not going anywhere, because that's just what we do. Evan Batten, 7 News. Next on 7 Early News, new hope for the AFL season as clubs prepare to resume playing earlier than expected. And while bosses map out a revised competition, some of the game's hottest young stars are working on their speed. While the AFL is being a lot more cautious than the NRL, clubs are increasingly optimistic the season could restart in late June. The AFL will give updated advice on April 27. The initial plan was to train from May 4 and resume footy on May 28. More realistically, though, clubs are working towards late June. We've been pretty honest with our players to say it's our view that those timeframes at this point are, are probably a little ambitious. Speaking to a number of CEOs at different clubs, we're sort of preparing ourselves that it might be delayed for another few weeks after that. Former Saint Paddy McCartan is eyeing off a return to football later this year. The former number one draft pick has suffered eight concussions since 2014. Peter Vlandes has confirmed NRL teams will not be stripped of competition points earned in the first two rounds of the season. Whenever play finally gets underway, there's a group of young guns ready to fire. Star pupils of the Roger Fabry Speed Academy, Kalen Ponga, housemate Connor Watson, Rooster, Kyle Flanagan and Shark Bronson Sherry. Wow, he's, had, he's got a set of wheels that I don't actually didn't think he had. I've heard the talk, but when you, you know, people talk a lot. Training is leading to match races headlined by the Fox versus 19-year-old Sherry. The Waratahs players are expected to be stood down without pay after Rugby Australia again failed to strike a pay cut deal with the Players Association. However, it's believed Rugby Australia could be about to get a helping hand from the governing body to save it from going broke. The exact figure has not been decided or discussed but would likely be millions of dollars after World Rugby generated a huge profit from last year's World Cup in Japan. With the Premier League on hold and a return date uncertain, Matty Ryan is back home before reuniting with his family. The Socceroos star has to complete two weeks of self-isolation at a hotel in Sydney. Obviously I knew that the quarantine period was going to be here and I had to get through it, but there's a nice prize at the end of the day and you know, who knows how long will be home after that. Ryan's been told he needs to be back in Brighton for training in early May in the hope the EPL can resume in June. Surfing's Easter Classic at Bells Beach should have included a triumphant return for Tyler Wright. Two years ago, the two-time world champ was struck down with influenza, which turned into post-viral syndrome, and Wright feared she would never compete again. Constant severe pain, uh, constant headaches, um, sensitive to light and sound. I had fluid around my heart, my stomach didn't really work, mess with my brain function. Still in neurological rehab, Wright's ready to compete for the title again whenever they resume. We've found a competition that's up and running with crowds. Well, sort of. The Chinese Professional Baseball League threw its first pitch over the weekend in Taiwan, but no fans didn't mean no atmosphere. One team filled the stands with mannequins and cardboard cutouts, while robots provided some crowd noise.
for the record, the uni president Lions defeated the China Trust brothers in an 11 innings, four and a half hour epic. Next on 7 Early News, a closer look at how the weather is shaping up in your part of the country. An 11-year-old Brindle boxer has become somewhat of an essential worker at a winery in the US. Meet Soda, who's helping maintain social distancing between humans by delivering wine bottles to customers in Maryland. People order over the phone and online and then come to the winery to pick up their purchase from Soda. We're told he's given lots of pats and his favourite treats as payment. Taking a look at the weather around the country now, a low pressure trough over northwestern Australia and the top end is triggering showers and storms. An upper level trough over the southeast is bringing showers and a few storms to northern Tasmania and parts of southern Victoria. Around the capitals, Brisbane mostly sunny, 28 degrees. Sydney sunny, reaching 24. Canberra, some early fog, then mostly sunny and 22. Melbourne, 23 degrees, partly cloudy. Hobart, partly cloudy, 21. Adelaide, sunny.